Are you racing 70.3 Valencia on the 21st of April? Brilliant. This is the video for you because in it, as an Ironman U certified coach, I'm going to go through a course preview in terms of talking through the swim, the bike, the run routes. Also, some last minute training tips or what you need to focus on for the next 30 days, equipment recommendations. And also, I'm going to throw in some cool giveaways as I go along. So let's get you prepared for the inaugural race in Valencia. And we're good. OK, so. As I said, I'm going to cover the swim course, the bike course, run course, talk about some key training sessions and also some non-training uh, preparation you need to look at in terms of packing, logistics, how you get your bike to Valencia, etc. And then just to wrap it up, I will have talk about some key dates you need to have in your diary around the logistics of this. And there's a bit of a giveaway, which will even help you prepare better for the race on the 21st. So let's get into it. Quick intro, who am I? I am Coach Steve or Stephen Moody. Um, I'm an Ironman U certified coach. I'm a Triathlon Ireland Coach of the Year. I have been coaching triathlon for 20 years. I have personally done uh, 11 full Ironmen, 15 halves, etc. And um, I've got a number, hundreds of athletes to world champs, to uh, the first time finishes, etc. So know my stuff. But you don't care about that. Let's get you the info you need to get yourself set up for Valencia. Okay, so first off, we will talk about the route itself. Swim, transition, bike, transition, run. Um, now, our, the, the Valencia, now again, normally in my course previews, I've actually had first-hand experience of this, or I've had athletes who've actually done the race, but seeing this is the first ever um, edition of Valencia, there's a lot of kind of looking at videos and a bit of research from my actual own travels to Valencia. Um, and some a little bit of assumptions, but let's go let's go through it in detail. Swim advice for those who are new to to, uh, to Ironman distance triathlon, there will be a rolling swim start. What does this mean? That means you have to seed yourself on the basis of what time you think you will do your race in. So if you think you're going to swim under thirty minutes, there will be a corral or a, an area where you stand in where there's a little sign that says under thirty minutes. Stay in there. Um, and then they'll let people in in uh, groups of three to five, as in there will be volunteers holding their hands like that. A whistle will go. You, they'll, they'll put up the hands and people run into the water. Um, they'll do that until every single athlete goes and they'll release the fastest swimmers first. Um, and what, there was a, the slower swimmers at the end. Also, a key thing to, to expect here, this is going to be highly probable a wetsuit swim. The average water temperature between 16 to 18 uh, degrees Celsius. Our cutoff for our man wetsuit swims is around 24. So, well, you cannot guarantee anything these days. You will say, was it you're highly likely it's going to be a wetsuit swim. Um, back to my other point about the seeding yourself correctly. Um, as I said, don't suddenly assume if you've only ever swam 40 minutes for um, a, a 1900 meter swim that you're going to suddenly start swimming uh, 30 minutes on the day. You won't. Put yourself in roughly the where you think you're going to finish. Otherwise, you'll get swam over. It'll be an un uncomfortable day for yourself. The swim is just setting yourself up for a big bike and a big run. Do not make it more difficult for yourself than you need to. Um. If you're, again, there will be around 12 boys in, in total. If you're a nervous swimmer or a weaker swimmer, go wide at these because this is where you will get a bit of um, physical contact. As in, a, just a, people go for the, the tightest line. So therefore, they end up people kind of touching legs, pulling arms. It's not intentional. If you want to avoid that sort of messing, go wide. You'll add on a little bit, a couple of minutes as well to your time, but it'll be a much more comfortable swim. In terms of other items, what you uh, that you need to be aware of when we talk about sighting in Ironman and 70.3 swimming that's uh, basically making sure you don't go too far off course so sighting is every kind of um, three to six strokes that you pop your head up and you check out where you are and then typically what you do is you pick you will fix on a stationary object that's not going to move a jetty a colorful building and um, don't pick something like a boy because those can move around and also get confused with the, uh, with the chop so what what you're looking for, and this is a key part of your pre-race recce, is getting into the water the day before and figure out what the sighting points are. Here are some suggested sighting points. When This is our start point here at the green jetty. So I think 
when you're looking for something when you're doing your recce the day before and i talk about this in the dates and times earlier you're looking for something on this side a building something that when you look up and you keep seeing it in front of you it means you're going in a straight line your sighting's working then that your next sighting point will be something around up here just went in this kind of little um estuary kind of canal um waterway and you don't need to worry about this way this will be tight enough so you, you won't need to have a sighting point there so that's your second sighting point then on the way back you're looking for something a building or a big tree or something that you can actually sort of uh, aim for on the way back down and um, again these jetties will be perfect there might be boats there again like pick a boat etc and then your final sighting point will be the typically the big black arch that you exit the water from um, draft as much as possible is a great tip in Ironman and 70.3 swimming. Drafting is illegal on the bike, but it's completely legal and really clever tactic when you're swimming uh, in 70.3 races. Drafting means you get very close to someone's feet or on their hip. It means that they do break the water and it makes it a little bit easier to swim in their wake. If you think about when you're swimming in a pool, it's just, like, it's just easier if you're closer to someone. Maximize that in a 70.3 swim you want to save your energy for the bike and the run and um, the other items that i would recommend when you're coming into the finish um as i said probably around 200 300 meters kick a lot more as you're coming in because what happens there is it will help get the blood flow back to your legs because you're going to be um you're going to be um horizontal for the last 30 40 45 minutes and then suddenly when you jump up all the blood drains down and you get a bit dizzy also, another tip is don't jump up. Slowly ease yourself up. Let the blood flow return, and you don't want to get that kind of uh, faint feeling. And by kicking your legs a little bit more aggressively than you have for the entire swim will help get the blood flow around. And again, it's all about minimizing that kind of, oh, I'm going, I'm swimming, and I'm running, etc. And you can see people getting very woozy if they come, if they do jump up too quickly. Don't make that mistake. Okay, so you've done. Your 1.9k swim in the beautiful water in Valencia, you're feeling like a champ. Well done. Now you're into transition. Transition is here. Um, it'll be a single transition from what I understand. Um, but again, that's not I, I haven't seen an actual race briefing, which is out next week. But again, it's a good assumption. Um in transition, um, was it the it's a very specific set of rules. It's not like your normal local transit, uh, was it um transition where you had just put everything beside your bike. There are specific rules and bags you need to fill out, fill for each of the uh, transitions from T1 and then T2. For T1, when you're transitioning from your swim to bike, you will have to have a blue bag of which you need to have your bike shoes in, your helmet, your kind of any nutrition, your shades, etc. And um, you have to, it'll be put up on a rack, which will be numbered and you put that up the day before. All sounds a little bit um, complex. It's actually not. And to help out with this, I have a short video in the comments below that goes through how it works, what you need to put in your blue bag, what you need to put in your red bag, and little tricks that in terms of how to make it easier to identify and make sure you know where you're going to go to get your bag. And you're, therefore, you're not lost in transition running around. Um, and that's a key recce point that you need to do the night, but the day before when you're walking. My blue bag's here. When I'm running through, it's right beside that tree, right beside that bench. So you know where you're doing because you will come out of the water. You will be full of adrenaline. There'll be lots of people shouting. There'll be lots of excitement. You do not want to run past your bag and have to go back as you're running against the flow when you're just losing time. You don't want that smooth, calm transition. That helps if you've walked the transition area beforehand. Also, you know where your bike is, etc. Always about practice. But again, I've discussed that in the video in comments below. Okay, so next up. Okay, guys, I'm hoping that this useful uh, this video is useful. We're going through a lot more tips here in terms of going to go through the bike course, going to go through the run course. There's going to be a couple of giveaways at the end. But if it is, please, polite request, can you hit subscribe? Because I'm, I'm trying to grow the channel, trying to help cool athletes like yourself. There's lots of other videos and content that I will produce during the year. That you want to be better that we want to hear is to get fat, better and faster as a triathlete just a polite ask and um, we'll really appreciate it anyhow back to the course okay so the bike course in valencia um it is a single loop which is great means there's less drafting it's not going to be like a barcelona where you have a couple of loops and this packs can form should be less drafting 
Um, from my time in cycling in Valencia, the road surface is generally good, and it can be kind of uh, was it outside of the city confines is a bit more uh, was it roughness in the roads, but in general they're good surface, but always be situationally aware. Um, there is it's a rolling course. There's around seven hundred meters of elevation gain, and this is something that I'll talk about in your later training sessions. How you prepare for that, um. I also have spotted on this in terms of the, some technical turns, which I I would be very careful of. Um, for me, here, um, around the fifteen k mark, that's going to be a bit of a chicane. Just need to you need to slow down, take it easy there. This area here, while I'd say it's going to be very nice when you get on it, there's a couple of sharp turns onto it, and the turnabout, but the dead uh, dead turn here, and turning off, and then just this this looks like a very sharp turn here. There's also another gentleman in the in the Facebook group who has actually done and he cycled the course um, and I Spanish fella. So I'm going to put the comment, his actual video in the comments below so you can actually see it because he's actually done it with GoPro, which would be very helpful. But this, again, the overall course and um, aid stations, there's one at 18K. Uh, there's one at 30K. There is one at uh, 59 and there's one at 75. Um, be very uh, nutrition in uh, 70.3 is key um, and you're not only fueling the bike you're also fueling for the run i have another video in the comments below that talks about what it, was it how to what how you need to keep fueled on the bike what you should eat how you should eat um and also the, the kind of nuances of ironman aid stations where you will have to be able and something you need to practice in training talk about that at the moment about being able to slow down, grab a bottle, change a bottle, um, take food, put it in your um your back of your tri suit, back of your cycling uh was a top onto the the boot bike. These are skills that you really need on a seventy dot three. So make sure you're practicing them even on your long runs, even at the end of uh, long bikes, when you're coming along, make sure you get you have your whatever kids or your wife holding out a bit of food at the end. And you go, look, I'm just going to cycle past. Just let me slow down, make sure I control the bike, grab the bottle, swap it in, grab the food, swap it in. And do it a couple of times because it's a unique skill that you need to get used to. But also, you'll also need to be remember that when the, on this course is going to be 2,000 plus people athletes. And when you come to an aid station, it can be very busy. And not, so therefore, there's people coming in. You need to talk to one another. I'm coming in. I pointed a, a, a volunteer. I want that bottle hand out then i'm coming out so you don't suddenly veer into someone um who's coming out behind you and um, and also at the same time to make it even more um a little bit more not treacherous but just risky people will drop stuff so therefore there'll be bottles around so not only are you looking for the volunteer you and you're grabbing one hand while balancing bike you're also looking that you're not going to go over a, a, a bottle rolling on the ground something to be uh so aid stations are brilliant and really key to making sure that you fuel and actually complete your race where feeling strong but they can be slightly risky so take everything slow calm control just get in know what you want beforehand get it get it on board safely exit and then hit the hit those watts again but those are your aid station numbers okay um next up what do we have Again, transition device. So you've done your 90K, as I said, on those brilliant rolling hills. You will have burnt your legs a little bit because of the climbing, but that's okay. We're now going to go back into T2, where we're going to transition again. Now, this time, we are looking for a red bag, which indicates your bike to run. In it, you'll have your runners, your 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 visor, your shades, your um, sunscreen, whatever you particularly need to take with you. Again, I go through this in detail in the transition bags video. Exactly just these are the things you need. Um, so make sure you watch that. It's in the comments below. Okay, guys, again, pull out again, sorry, but a, a little plug. Please make sure you like the video if it's if you're finding any of this useful. Um, it kind of helps my YouTube influencer notions. Um also hello to my dog behind who's meant <laughs> to be there, but always ends up being the star of the show. The run. Okay, it actually looks like a really nice run course. It's um, what do you call it? It's two loops, but very flat. Um, the and the key to running a uh a half marathon off of what's going to be a kind of a, a tough enough bike with the rolling hills is all about pacing. 
Um, what I advise for people is rather than go, oh my God, 21K, like I've only done whatever, 20K in my training, la la la. Break it into 7K chunks, as in the first one, you need to hold back, as in sort of as if you're going like, oh, wow, I, I, I like I'm, I, the brakes are on here. That's fine. You're running a little bit on adrenaline. You're, the crowd is cheering because there's always big crowds around transition. You go, yes, yes, I'm, I'm off. But you don't want to go off like a, like a rocket and then end up finishing like a burst balloon. You want to build into the run. So hold back in the first seven. Settle into rhythm. Hit your kind of race pace. Whether you were, uh, was it numbers that you would have trained in in your set in your in the build up to uh, Valencia. And the third, it, the third is always going to suck. <laughs> the third, your your last seven k, it's always hard. You have to dig deep. You have to think about your mental game. You have to think about. You have to visualize the finish line. You need to think about your mantras, small, uh, short, powerful statements that get you back in the zone. As in, was a one more k. Catch that guy. Catch that guy. Slow. Whatever you need to do to zone you, you zone you into that uh, frame of mind that you are comfortable and you're running strong. Um, what who you're dedicating this? Are you doing this race to kind of you know in memory of a loved one, to kind of inspire your kids? Was it as as a bet with your friends? Dig in, find whatever image you need to do to get you running tough, because that's what the last seven k is. Um. Fueling is key. Again, as I said, you should mainly fuel for this on the on the bike. But there's there's aid stations around roughly every kind of two and a half k. Um, oh yes, in terms of the aid stations, typically what you'll get from an Ironman race are going to be Morton gels, um, bananas. Be, was it? There'll be uh, Lucas, uh, not Lucas, say Gatorade. Uh, there will be Red Bull. If you, I just can't take that stuff, but again, it's there if you want it. The normally sort of salty crackers and stuff like that. For me, um, I always feel I actually slightly controversial tactic here. I do not take anything with me when I'm going and food wise when I'm running on a half marathon or an Ironman. Um, because I actually feel that the aid stations are so close together, like it's only two and a half K apart. And I feel that I spent so much money and my entry fee getting into the race. I am getting my money's worth in Morton gels, which are around five quid, six quid <laughs> pounds or, or, or sorry, euro. And um, so I just load up and I eat my fill from, um, was it Iron Man's reserves? So again, just bear in mind. And you don't want to be carrying excess weight as there's no point in carrying a load of gels or water bottles if you're going to be running and passing an aid station within two and a half kilometers. Bear that in mind when you're working out your nutrition strategy, especially for the run. Um, Pacing, we've talked about feed off the crowd energy. Um, when I, especially in the new 70.3, the 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 uh the locals really come out to support it. We saw that in Cork. Um, they get behind it and they will be and you know, all your friends and your club mates will be there supporting you. Shout out one another, feed off that energy. You'll need it, especially in the last 14k. Um think about the finish line. Do not make that mistake going over the finish line, looking at your watch, going, oh, what's my time? Sod that. That will ruin your finish line photograph. What you want to be doing is giving it boom or whatever, a dab or, or aeroplane, whatever you plan, but think it out and also use that as a distraction from the pain in your legs and going like for the last 2K, right, what am I going to do in the finish line? Am I going to high five, yada, yada. Sorry, like, you've worked very hard for this. This is your moment. Make sure you it was it you completely milk it. Okay, so that's the course. As I said, it's going to be. I think it's going to be a really good course. I think it's going to be a very popular course. And um, all the Spanish races are always really well run. Mallorca, Barcelona, Victoria Castells, like they, they, they've got it down. The Spanish folk put on a great show. So hopefully, it's a great race. But we're going to talk a little bit about was it your next thirty days training? Okay, a specific, look now that we know what the course is a bit more about. Um, swimming wise. It's a sea swim, so therefore, if you can, now again, this is I, I'm I'm based in Ireland, so it's pretty cold, and it will be very much up the next few uh few weeks anyhow to be getting in in a wetsuit. But if you can get into the water, get used to swimming in your wetsuit, get or used to being buffeted by waves, while it's like getting salt water in your mouth if you bump into bump into the odd jellyfish, get used to it because that's possibly what's going to happen. Um, again, those skills we talked about, sighting and drafting, practice them, get your friends down and make sure you swim in a bunch. There's a bit of safety in numbers and also you practice the drafting. If you can't, at the weather's way too cold, it's also worth considering your logistics, getting out there to Valencia, 
a couple of days early, like as an arrive out on the Wednesday and then have your own swim then on the Thursday and the Friday. There is a practice swim scheduled, which I'll talk about in a couple of um in the, in the key dates and times at the end. But definitely do that. But if you can, and you're not, I'm very cold. I, I'm, I'm very soft when it comes to cold water. So if you're stronger, uh, harder than me, get in as uh, was it after your long runs. It'll be good for your legs, etc., and all the rest. The bike, as I said, it's this stage. It's a hilly bike. Um, well, rolling. It's not. There's no massive climbs from what, what we can see on the well, the, the course recce's and the kind of elevation profile. Um, but you should be hitting at least covering 90k and at 100k in a single standalone bike and practicing nutrition and practicing and ideally on your uh your bike setup on your race bike if you're going to do it on a tt i think it will be a tt course and um, make sure you do that and in those long rides make sure you're covering that minimum 700 meters of climbing so you know what it feels like on your legs when you're in the it was at the going up and down the gears and how that might zap your legs a little bit um because it's a hilly course i would include um midweek hill repeats as i'm just going up um finding kind of a, a hill probably around a kilometer in length if it's around was it six to eight percent gradient perfect and just grind up that it'll just build some power in your cycling legs work out on your long bikes your hydration and your nutrition strategies i talk about that in a little bit in the next slide how you can dial that in but that's key to be practicing it on these long bikes so it's nothing new and you know what you're going to eat and you know when you're going to eat it how much etc test out your equipment are you going to use power pedals are you going to use uh just a heart rate monitor you're using a, a garmin and um, edge make sure you've actually tried that and it's all working and it's reading your heart rate monitor etc you don't want anything to be stressing you on the days leading up to the race run um again milestone distance you should be getting or at least covering at least um 18 to 20k in your long uh long runs in the in the last couple of weeks before you start tapering tapering typically depending on what plan you will be we are two weeks long um but you should be hitting at least 20k and throwing in some race pace efforts in that do what do you want to be running five minute kilometers for uh was it uh for five minute kilometers or do you want to be running seven minute but make sure you're dialed into that pace you know what your body feels like etc um, also have a brick of around three to five K off your long bike. You don't have to do massive long bricks if you're getting the long runs the day before or the day after, depending on your plan. But if you're covering, if you're able to comfortably cover five K off the off a 90 K bike, you're going to be fairly golden come race day. Again, also for your long runs, make sure you're trying out your uh, your nutrition strategies. If you're going to use Morton gels, we're going to use jelly babies. Where they're going to where, where you're going to carry them. Or what's it, what do they feel like when you're actually trying to consume them? Um, do you need water to wash them down, etc.? Dial that stuff in so you don't have any kind of nasty surprises come um, on the 21st of April. Okay, nutrition. As I said, that's a big topic in itself in terms of was it how you, what what amount, how much how many calories do you need? How are you going to get those calories into you? How are you going to transport those calories? How do you use aid stations? What are your food types? What's the timing? How do you keep yourself um, reminded to uh, Garmin alert, by the way, that's a spoiler. Um, there's a whole video on that. Um, it's probably 20 to 30 minutes long, but it goes into how you work out your nutrition's, work out your calorie specific needs, what the equates into food that you can eat and you like to eat, um, how you remind yourself of the Garmin alerts, how you inter uh, was it, uh, work the age stations into this. Way too much to go into one video on this. So I, I'm, then got to put the comment link in the comments below. Make sure you have a look at that. And again, also give it a like if you enjoyed it. It will give you a lot of good info. And that's the key is to know what you need to practice in the next couple of weeks rather than turn up race day. Okay, okay so I'm meant to try and eat um, wherever three block or cliff blocks every uh, 20 minutes. And then you suddenly try that and go, actually, I just can't stomach these. Your trial error. And exactly, we talk all about that in this video in the links below. Okay, next up. Equipment and apparel. What do you need? Um, okay, so swim. It is going to be a wetsuit swim. I'd, I'd be very surprised if not. Goggles, uh, swim hat. The, you will get a um, an Ironman-specific swim hat, but if it's going to be slightly cold in the water, bring another one you can wear over. And another way of, uh, was it, um, anchoring your goggles as well, which is a great tip. Tri suit. I put this in bold. Do you need a tri suit or do you want to go complete change of apparel? 
I talk about that and again the video below, but it um it does come down to if it's your first one, if you're nervous, you're going for a time, you're better off actually if you're racing for time, racing for a world champ slots, you want to be in tri suit um and because it's a quicker transition and it's less to worry about. If it's your first time, you just want your doubt to uh, was it to enjoy yourself, to complete it and the rest, go with the full change. It's a bit more comfort, you do lose a bit of speed. Um neck guard or body glide again this is something especially because we won't have you won't have done that much open water swimming the classic um injury we uh, was at a triathlete's pickup is when we start doing our open water swims we get a lot of uh friction on the back of our neck from the wetsuit because we're not used to it i highly recommend this lad here and um, it's a neck protector or body glide and make sure because you, you don't want that kind of red wall feeling in the back of your neck you actually probably won't notice it until the end of the race but it'll be very sore afterwards these are great ways of actually avoiding it. I, there's a video in the comments below that shows you how it works and how it doesn't affect your transition. And um, this body glide is great in terms of helping you get your wetsuit off quickly. You can put it on your arms. It makes it a little bit um, more because it, uh, it takes makes the taking of the wetsuit off quicker. Bike TT or time as a time trial. Uh, it's a bit more of an aggressive sort of setup. If you have that, I think it is going to be a time trial course. I know there's a little bit of climbing, but there's no massive big climbs that would put it, put you off it. If you've only got a road bike and clip on aero bars, go with that. Helmet, shades, cycle shoes, and socks. I'm a big fan of socks in, in 70.3 and Ironman distance. Why? Because it's slightly more comfortable. Yes, you might save yourself a couple of seconds by not putting on socks in transition one and transition two. More important, sprint and Olympic distance. For If you want to have a little bit more comfort for it's going to be a long day, get your socks. Um, race belt where you're going to put on your number, uh, et cetera, and you will need to display that um, on the bike and on the run. Um, hydration, nutrition. And I always say this, even if the race is in Spain, bring a rain or a wind jacket, because sometimes, like, I've gone to Barcelona, and it's meant to be, normally it's really, really warm, and it's lovely, but some races I've done, it's actually been cold. And you went, oh, man. So remember, it's better to be looking at it than looking for it. So just pack it when you're going along. And therefore, if it is actually the weather's unseasonably cold or windy and you put it in your blue bag, you can make that call as I went, actually, that weather looks a bit cold. I don't want to be freezing on the bike. So you just put it on or you go, what, that weather's nice and sunny. I'm not going to need that extra layer. Just leave it in the bag. No odds. Um, what do you call it? Run. Uh, Loctite laces. These are locked out laces in terms of essentially turn your runners into a pair of kind of slip ons. So they don't have to tie your laces. They're quite uh, they're quite cool. Really useful at sprint and Olympic distance. Say, still save you a certain amount of 60 seconds to a minute on the arm distance, which look, and it doesn't have any impact on you. The again, a video show in the below shows how they work. Um I'm a fan. Hat, visor, shades, socks again. Let's never forget how good socks can be. Race belt, if you have to use a different one. Nutrition. And again, back to my previous point. There's lots of food at the aid stations. Take advantage. Um, Post-race, change of clothes, ways of contacting friendly, um, compression gear if you need it. Sounds like a lot. Don't worry, I'll give you a checklist at the end to help you make sure you pack everything. Um, preparing to travel and checklist. Now's the time when you're coming up before taper um, to kind of make sure that you've got everything sorted. Uh, check your logistics, verify your flight details, transfer details, how you're getting from the airport to the your hotel. Double check as well. And I've done this. I have uh, I thought I'd reserved a place in Mallorca for my 70.3. Turned up and I actually reserved on the wrong island. However, so just don't make mistakes like I do. Just again, peace of mind is what you want in the last few weeks when you are tapering, as in when you're reducing your training load to get ready for the race, that you actually have no stressors, okay? I talk about that in the taper video as well. Plan out your key your arrival time and key events. Again, I talk, the final kind of slides, I talk about the key dates and times you need to be aware of in terms of the timetable. You don't want to turn up and realize that it was late and the registration's closed and missed. Just know in advance. Um, for me, I always book a bike service prior to travel. Um, as I said, you've probably two more weeks of kind of heavy training, then you're going to go into your taper. Um, book in with the local bike store. Just make sure that that thing is purring come race day because you don't want to go over and went, actually, wow, the ball bearings in my uh, bike is gone and therefore it's a disaster over there. Make sure 
you just eliminate any kind of small risks, etc. Know what you need to pack and plan. Again, we've went over, there's a planning checklist there. Uh, how are you going to get your bike there? You can uh, either go with a bike box or there's a specialized uh, bike transport option. I'm talk about that here. We have a partnership with teamtruck.eu and also coupon if you want to use it. Um, it's up to yourself all about what you want to do. Again, minimizing stress, minimizing worry. If you're poor uh, assembling bikes, you don't have a bike box, you're nervous about it, possibly the bike transport option is up for yourselves. Otherwise, if you're used to com uh, comfortable um, dismantling the bike, putting in the bike box, putting it together, again, then it's up to yourselves. Just as a, as a quick mention, as I said, teamtruck.au, there are guys we work with um, that essentially what you do is you arrange a drop-off with them in terms of uh, you book in the bike, you drop off your bike at the set pickup places, they cover the EU, uh, sorry, no, they cover Ireland, England, Scotland, um, and they swing around, you drop in your bike into like a, bike, a local bike store, they pick it up, they put it in a specialized van, they bring it to the event, you pick it up the day or two beforehand, they don't need to un unassemble it, it comes uh, completely assembled. It's um, it's just, again, for people who are nervous with the bike, who don't want to put it on a plane, etc., they drive it overland, and it, it the bike's a bit safer, and it's just in terms of takes that worry with anything go wrong with my bike, will it get lost on the plane? Will it get damaged on the plane, etc. An option for yourself. So if you're interested in that, they actually we have a deal with the guys, as in if you uh, use the coupon below, Smart Endurance 35, when booking, you'll save 35 euros off your booking. Just an option and just a bit of a giveaway because we like you. Um, okay. Otherwise, you will need to pack other stuff. So you need to make out separate lists for swim, bike, run. It's all those items that you're going to have to remember. Oh, my God, I'm going to forget stuff. It's nerve-wracking. Oh, what about my uh, my ID? I need that. I need my QR code on my phone. I need my a, a picture of my was it my National Federation license. You do to book in. My, did I bring my chargers? Oh, my God, my, my DI2. Or, or was it the charge gone? I didn't my garments not charging. La, la, la. That's a lot to remember, but don't worry, we got you covered. Another video there, um, how to pack abroad, and also a, a really handy downloadable checklist so you can just mark it off and therefore make sure you're not gonna forget, including cool things like air tags. If you are gonna put your bike in a, in a plane, you can stick that on and you know where they go. Save me losing my bike in Florida, so I'm a big fan of them. Okay, so last bit of information just before my final giveaway and um, i'm going to give you something else at the end because i'm just a really bloody nice guy um key things you need to work work out um friday 11 the friday 19th is the first time you'll be able to register from 11 o'clock onwards me personally in terms of my logistics i always go a couple of days beforehand i'll arrive on a wednesday why because if something does get lost if my bags get lost or there's a problem with my bike if it went on the plane I've got a couple of days to sort it out. I don't want any stress. But the earliest you can register, and again, you will need your QR code. You'll need your um, your license, a uh, picture of your license as well, I believe, and a photo ID um, to register. This is key. The 20th of April, there's actual a formalized swim practice between 9 and 11. As I said, a lot of us won't have a chance to actually swim before the event. And this is brilliant to kind of get out. They should have the boys out. That's where we talk about you check out the sighting points. Um, really key to get that in. As I said, do take advantage of this. Um, and if you are arriving late, and I always worry about people that do this or go like the the day before the race, because so many things can go wrong with an Ironman race. These are, that's your last chance to dance. You're between ten and half two. Get in, get it sorted. Um, bike and bag check in are also on this on the the oops that should be the Saturday twentieth. Um, make sure again because as I said you have to rack your bags um, and also check in your bike the night before don't worry they're all the, the, the they have security on the uh, on the bikes and all the rest so like and everyone's leaving their bike in it's just part of the whole thing that's where you need to pack your blue bag and your red bag beforehand and again go through the, the checklist video as well um, athlete briefings in terms of the um are available in English and Spanish. Check the check the time slots. Um, Sunday, big A day. Um, transition gets starts at six a.m. 
I advise people getting down there early in case something's happened with your bike, put your food and your, was it your bottles on, et cetera, check your bike, computers working, et cetera, in case something might've bumped your, your bike or uh, in transition, just get down there early. Make It's actually kind of cool, the atmosphere there. Yes, a little bit nervous, but it's just part of the whole deal. Um, pros start around 7.30. Age group guys will be starting at 7.40 and then it's go time. And then you just cash in all that cool training you have a super race day and uh, you cross the finish line with a smile, you get your medal and you have an absolute epic experience in Valencia. Okay, guys, I hope that was useful. And here's the final giveaway for you. Um, I run monthly webinars uh, where anyone can Zoom and can dial in via Zoom and ask me any questions they want. As I said, I've 20 plus years coaching experience. I'm Arma and you certified. Um, I've got thousands of athletes over the line over the years um but the webinar that will focus mainly on valencia will be on the 7th of april at uh, 6 p.m gmt if you want to get on uh, register for that make sure you're either subscribed you get some sort of notification or best or better off if you send me your email to info at smart endurance solutions.com i'll add you to the invite list you'll get a reminder etc but that's all from me. As I said, thank you very much for watching. Um, I hope the rest of your training goes really well. Um, and maybe we'll even see you in Valencia. I've got a couple of athletes racing. I might go over and spectate and actually just see what it is, how the race is going to pan out. But until then, thank you very much for watching. And uh, we'll talk to you soon.